Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis a da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. And alhamdulillah that Surah Al-Kahf is an immense ocean of realities. And alhamdulillah that technologies that are coming are explaining the Divinely Kingdom. Its use of it may not be appropriate on dunya but its purpose was to explain the Heavenly Kingdom. Those whom understand these technologies and now even children by one, two years old are understanding, by ten years old they're able to make entire graphic productions for schools and projects. So they're already coming with this code in their reality and the purpose of teaching it, it shows Allah's kingdom. In the last days thy kingdom come and Allah's will will be done. And that's with the arrival of these heavenly souls and heavenly personalities and the hukum and the government of the heavens begins to open upon this earth. The technology shows everything. This concept that some mentioned of quantum entanglement and then when you make your tafakkur and contemplate that now Allah is giving for these scientists to understand this malakut, this world of light that awliya teach and tariqahs propagate. And not to be too technical but they found that certain particles entangle. Like in the physical world relationships and they call entanglement that you're so involved in your relationship of love with your spouse, your children, you're in every aspect of their life they found similar in the atomic and particle level. That if these particles come together and get entangled they found no matter the distance close or far what happens to one can be immediately seen on the other. Their quantum, their light reality quantum. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. means the study of light. Their light reality they're mimicking these particles they understood. Particles and atoms and molecules come together with bonds and the strongest of bonds is love, not lust, love. And what Prophet gave to us, Allah gave to us quantum, kuntum in tuhibunullah fatabiyuni kuntum, tell them if they want my love fatabiyuni to follow you and I will love them. They will be entangled in the Divine reality of La ilaha illallah. Muhammadun Rasulullah the original entanglement. This is the secret of our whole existence that Muhammadun Rasulullah powered by La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah by itself we are not there. 
we don't exist at that level. Our existence, because you're not in La ilaha illallah, it's a phrase that is self-explanatory. La ilaha illallah means nothing but Allah Where we existed is the entanglement in which Allah brought the particles of Sayyidina Muhammad and gives to us, فَتَّبِعُونِي Follow this relationship and reality of light and it will dress you in its entanglement. As Allah is dressing with the love He has for Prophet is dressing Allah dressing the reality of Prophet hence giving its qudra and its power. Giving then, in Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusallun ala nabi Allah's zikr is now that power, its entanglement is the whole movement of this ocean coming together and everything manifesting from that. In the world of light when you come and form a bond of love, the light that you bring because no longer we're talking physical but as soon as you have a bond of love with somebody their light is coming and being entangled within yours, diffused within your lights. This is still the world of form because light has a form, you're seeing it. But deeper than the light there's an energy and in the energy are these particles and atoms that's why we don't see atoms, we see light. But where there's light there are atoms, where there are atoms there are energies. So when the sense of madad is coming, what's happening? Is that you're calling for a light, you're calling for this reality and lights to come and you're hoping that your light will be entangled, mixed and diffused. And its secret to keep it is love, it's the strongest bond. So these molecular scientists know that there's a bond that has to take place and the strongest is, is and the most natural understanding is love. The entanglement of parents and children and loved ones spouses and dear ones, relatives is love, it's the purest entanglement. So you feel what your loved one feels, you sense what they sense if they're in danger, you sense the danger. This is just material dunya. And what Allah wants for us because the scientists once they start because the kingdom is coming there's no more going to hide everything, you can't hide a reality. And if ignorant people want to hide then the scientists are saying, no this guy's talking the truth. We found at a scientific level these particles are communicating and if they entangle themselves reactions will occur regardless of their distance together, could be very far away, happens here, happen there. What Prophet's hadith of entanglement? You be with whom you love. And that was the formula for entanglement. And why Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq got up and started spinning? From that spin, Mevlevis took the reality of Sama because each wanted to now show advanced sciences. So the Mevlevis immediately took from Sayyidina Abu Bakr's knowledge because he started to whirl is the atomic reality. That so happy that Prophet is bringing out this knowledge and immediately took his jubbah and began to whirl. Not a gesture of dance, it's forbidden this type of thing but to show the atomic reality later a time will come they'll understand that your atoms are in an ocean 
and its movement and manipulation is going to be based on love. If you entangle your love with the wrong characters in life and then what Allah says, if they do good you'll share in the good, if they do bad you will share in the bad because you're entangled with them. Your friends, the people you want to be with Allah says, be careful. For if they do good things then alhamdulillah for you, you'll share in the good. But most people the friends are not really righteous people and Allah's warning is you'll be entangled with them. The hardships they have will become your hardships in life. The sicknesses they have will be the sicknesses you have in your life, you're entangled. We're entangled in everything. And Allah says, if you kill one soul as if you kill them all because that's the real internet. Above us is an ocean of lights that are all diffused. You're not operating in a vacuum by yourself. So Prophet brought for us the greatest technology, you be with whom you love, just make sure who you love is right. If you're right and you chose in life, I want the people whom love the Divine. Then I want the people whom love the Divine and now the shaykh is teaching me that they love Sayyidina Muhammad because I have to choose the one whom loved the Divine in the most perfected, most beautific, most praised way. And Allah gave to him, you are the most praised one. So the title is clear, I want the love and companionship of Sayyidina Muhammad because I know if I'm entangled with that that will bring me to the entanglement of Allah and that's what Allah gave to us from Qur'an and Ayatul Kareem, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِيُونِي So فَاتَّبِيُونِي is your whole life has to be entangled with Prophet What you eat, how you pray, what you drink, how you drink, it's called following the sunnah. That's the فَاتَّبِيُونِي, that's the entanglement. You don't love from a distance, Allah says, no, no, how you eat you follow, how you drink you follow, how you sleep you follow, how you wash you follow. Imagine now all these categories of sunnah and people can recognize that you're supposed to love Prophet more than you love yourself. Allah has you eating, drinking, sleeping, walking, talking, communicating, family, everything according to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad because this is fatabiuni. Why? So that we can gain Allah's yuhibukumullah. If they achieve this movement in your ocean then your dress will be upon their dress. Shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran. The Prophet light more powerful than ours. So we're not going to be sending to Prophet because he's the far more powerful energy force but he begin to send his energies upon your atom and begin to change you, dress you, bless you, hudan al-muttaqeen and to guide you. It becomes the immensity of Allah's guidance. So now scientists will come and prove tariqahs. Why? Because Allah is saying, there's no more time for you to keep playing and following shaitan. And you're listening to shaitan and then saying, no, no, this doesn't exist, this doesn't. And the only people who don't seem to understand science are the Muslims. Why? In the last days the Christians, Jews and Buddhists would come towards Sayyidina Mahdi Why? Because they had the knowledges. They achieved these immense realities of sciences and they left it. They brought the sciences of medicine and math and anything you can think of and they left it. And now when you talk about the science and spirituality they don't want to even hear it. And when these videos go out you see in the comments or all the techs and computer scientists that are coming and logging in. And say that we verify it, 
I don't know who you are but what you're talking we know, we see it in the systems, we see it in our computers, we see it in the, in the particle studies and atomic studies. And that's what Allah described about numbers and everything is perfectly numbered and that would be for the people of the book to come to guidance because in the last days they're the ones in sciences, they're the ones in all of this, God's kingdom will be evident and prevalent in everything they see, this has to do with God's kingdom and He has a control over it and if they want to join the kingdom they'll see everything else is corrupt except the non-compromising Islam. That no, no we don't uh, compromise our faith, it is according to the beloved of Allah no change, no modification, no innovation. So we want to reach to these lights, we want to be entangled into this understanding. What Allah gave to us then? Inna ladheena yubayyunaka yubayyun Allah, yadullahi fawqa aydihim. Take the hand. That you want to come to this reality, take the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad don't separate from it to the detriment of your soul. Because if you pull from your entanglement you don't understand how much is coming to you, right? We don't understand how much our light is mixed and all the, the ni'mat that comes to us from this love that we have and Allah's warning, don't because what you wouldn't think bayad has to do with your soul. You say, okay I just leave, I do whatever I want. Those whom entered into the true religion where they found they have to have a guide, they have to take a hand so they can reach their ahad and their covenant, that was Surah Tawbah. These were the men whom reached and fulfilled their covenant and ahad with Allah you see that out of 99% of Islam nobody takes bayat anymore, so th those then become very khawas. They're guided to make their Islam real, take the hand of those who represent Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah feekum that they're amongst you, these Muhammadiyoon, their hand represents the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad take it, connect. Then immediately they're teaching, entangle your light with them because now we'll use their science words. Muraqaba didn't seem to spark too much understanding for people. Meditation seems to be more like a hobby for people. So now I read this, go read the science articles, go study Google, what is quantum entanglement, simplified understandings of quantum entanglement. Quantum is the study of light and the study of entangled light and what happens and then now think back towards my spirituality that I want to be entangled with the Divinely realities and this shaykh is teaching that and that's what's called muraqabah, how to connect, how to keep the focus of the ulul am and bring my light out asking for permission to connect to your encrypted files. That's why the other technology. So you try to log on to websites or devices. What happens when you try to log on? You have to be verified. What's your code? What's your password? Now they want to send a text to your phone. More sophisticated systems they want to see your eyeball. They want to have biometric verification because I could steal his phone for very sensitive information. Let's see your eyeball because we can have a whole fingerprint more intricate than your thumbprint by just your eye and each eye uniquely different than anyone else's eye. It has to be verified, the technology is teaching us. As a result of verifying you can now access this sensitive information to a degree that you've been cleared in your clearance. 
So now in the relationship of the shaykh with students, so we laid the foundation, we want to be entangled in these lights. They found out that they react and act and that's why many times we describe fulqul mashqoon, they're loaded ships. All they need is for you to come into their quantum field and they grab one atom of you because their scientists are finding that the atoms are communicating. They entangle your atom with themselves for you to understand their science. And everything that shaykh does will dress on your atom and will send that back to your whole. They don't need the whole of the person, they don't need to take the person's soul. Allah send one drop of their tiniest atom, jump on his ship, you'll be entangled with his lights. Whatever tanzila comes to the servant of Allah hits the atom of that individual and immediately dresses them, wherever they are, the whole of it. And that was the barakah of visiting maqams and being a suluk, being a, a seeker, salik who goes out and searches and continuously moves in the realm of these lights and awliya and saints and all these amazing maqams. That's Allah's kingdom on earth and everywhere they went their atoms were left there to be dressed by these awliya, to be blessed by these awliya. So when they come to the tariqah they find the shaykh, the shaykh teaches now make your connection. Make your muraqabah, connect your heart and then they say, I don't feel anything. We're now at that state where people are saying, I don't feel anything. What does the tech teach us? The shaykh is like a quantum, quantum, quantum computer and some people they're like a 2007 phone. Because they haven't had many upgrades, they come new, they haven't done many practices. Why would the 2007 phone that's here be able to make a link with a quantum computer? For if that computer sends its information it's enough to blow the computer up, blow the phone up, it's too much of a file. It's too much energy coming on to that system, too many different uh, files coming on. So you take an old phone, very old you find in the cupboard, try to connect it now to your Apple account. Not one even app will fit on the uh, 10 gigs or 6 gigs that you first bought your phone. Now they want 250 gigs. Why? Increase capacity, increase files and apps are coming. So the technology is teaching us in their man-made understanding that you need continuous updates. You can't come to that door and think that we are by virtue of cleverness entitled just to receive the whole download. Why is not just coming? What do your technology doesn't work like that? Why would Allah work like that? Then they say that the system you're trying to connect to, your actual whole hardware has to be upgraded. You don't have enough operating memory, means your system doesn't have the capacity, your brain is foggy and your heart is, is dark. It doesn't have the capacity to receive these lights. So what happens is my life is about continuous upgrade continuous system of being connected to receive upgrades, to receive upgrades, to receive upgrades. So then what was the system because the, the zawiyas were different than the, the masjid and imams, completely different system. You go for masjid for Jummah but you go to the zawiyas and the understandings of zawiyas and tariqahs for enlightenment and to reach your covenant with Allah so you would go before not even 10, 15, 20 years ago. You have to find a shaykh 
to be somebody who really wanted to upgrade their software, not a distance person, you had to find the shaykh and then go live with the shaykh because there was no distance learning. And you committed your life to the service of that shaykh. They would live in their villages, Shaykh Nazim village was very huge, the other one village was in Michigan. And you live there, you serve there. They would have a farm, thousands of trees, you saw the orange trees, hundreds of sheep. You come in, take your clothes off, put this flea infested outfit on, it was like a potato sack that mm, make you, they all had a bed bug attack that time we visited. Yeah. Why? Because they want to see if you want to run, run now in the next couple of days otherwise you're wasting our time. So it was all about now deprogramming and reprogramming. And as soon as they, they lived there, they lived a life of service, they worked the field, they worked the sheep, they worked everything on the shaykh's property. One year, two year, five year, thirty years or died in that service. Until what? That every time they did a khidmat, every time they did a service, every time they served the shaykh, Allah upgraded their file. Upgrade their file, upgrade their file. And you would see after a few years they have capacity. You see light upon them, they live a life of service. Their heart has the capacity to achieve the fires of the shaykhs. The knowledges are understood because their capacity has been upgraded by Allah Because Allah wanted what? Service and khidmat. What did the companions do? They served Sayyidina Muhammad with their lives, not short, they didn't give charity. That, that was not the one that they talked about, their charity was their life. That you're going again, we're going. You're going again two times in one day, we're going to die. They came back alive, disappointed. They wanted to be the first ones to go and visit paradise under the flag of Sayyidina Muhammad So this was the way of serving to achieve what? Allah's rahmah. Allah's, down, uh, Allah's downgrade, not downgrade, download for us all these lights and softwares. What I'm in need of Ya Rabbi, how am I going to get it? And you had to live there and then you would be dispatched, you've been upgraded. As a matter of fact now you have ijazah and we are with you wherever you go on this earth. But that takes a lifetime of service. Then. About 20, 17 years we're here, 17 years we're serving in this area for them. And about 10 years ago or 7 years ago they opened permission for virtual zawiyah. So whatever's partaking now is exact same system they were running. How do you make a, a virtual zawiyah in which people don't have to come because we don't have capacity, sicknesses and restrictions are blocking but exact same system. That's why there are charities, that's why there are entities and websites, why? Because one is an orange field, one is the sheep, one is something else, it doesn't make a difference. Then there has to be an email in which you are communicating with the shaykh, not other people. We don't know what other people tell people, hidden conversations and, and… No, I'm emailing the shaykh and at least four or five people are watching that email so that everything is always according to sharia, there's no back, back actions. So just like the zawiyah. That we're communicating, we're emailing, giving opportunities for people to serve, to do, to be of service, to show their love for the shaykh, to do charities, to, to give out food, to do why? So that they can get an upgrade from Allah And every time they do a khidmat, every time they go and give food, every time they, they serve on the mawlid or do whatever the shaykh has given as an opportunity. 
It's a gift from Allah to grant upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. And now look at our lives and think that some people get a phone and they upgrade for one, two, three years, after that they say, I don't need any more upgrades. And what happens? They're now very limited in their software capacity. And if something really powerful comes out, they don't have the capacity to receive it. It's a lifelong process because we didn't achieve anything. False thoughts of achieving something in Allah's infinite oceans of reality. Who could say, I achieved it, it's finished? Finished with what? Allah said, it's just not finished. The oceans are infinite oceans. This was a lifelong process in which some people you'll see in tariqah, left and right of ourselves, they're not all the same. Some people have immense himmah. You know, they plug into that and an inner yearning in their system is, I will never stop until I'm fully upgraded. And they do a lot in a very short amount of time and then people are wondering, oh how is this person always around? How is this person always involved? Or oh, they do a lot and Allah has upgraded their, ser their servers, their systems, their capacity for light and knowledge and realities and understanding. So means we hold our own key. People are just waiting for something to happen, what, what are you waiting for? The system been given to you, go serve. You know how difficult it is for our people to all night long make comments on YouTube? People think I'm on my phone and thinking, Daddy are you playing on the phone all night long? You're talking about playing on the phone. Who's going to click on all these YouTube videos with, with hello, hello, heart, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you? No. Then we get Ali and these guys, please start doing these things. And they start posting, they say, who's posting these, you know, 20 different articles every day coming out? Who's making these videos by their own inspirations? Can you imagine if the one making videos was not inspired? And every time I say something they show an inappropriate image or not related image. We say, who's making this stuff? No, but they must have an immense capacity in which their software is very top, top notch software. So now in tech you start to understand, oh my software is really good. So then awliya and pious people been trained by awliya, they want the drop at the first level. Right? When new software is going to drop, that's the term they use. They don't want it after everybody got it. They want it the minute it's going to be coming out. Then this makes their spiritual rank in the heart of Prophet Now we can see through the technology and explain things for the people whom are tech savvy and understand. So when they're continuously living a life of service, they continuously have khidmat, their life is to serve people and create ways to be of service so that Allah to be happy. Why? Because they want the, the, the knowledges and realities that are dropping from the heart of Prophet the moment it's dropping. They don't want it after everybody got it. So then you'll see these high level ones speaking things that nobody speaks. They take the information from the heart of Prophet now they're responsible to drop. And as soon as they begin to talk about it, you'll see the knowledge trickle down into the hearts based on their software. Don't matter what kind of title that person thinks he has wherever he is on earth, he'll come across that and say, oh I never thought that uh, Sayyidina Omar Farooq was the siwak and eventually will come out with. Oh, we found it in hadith, oh we, oh we found like this, oh, oh we found it like that. Because you're seeing the waterfall of these knowledges come out and that's what's important. So how the shaykh lived his life was to completely serve his shaykh until he no longer existed, had nothing of anything, of anything. And in that subsistence in that reality was entitled to all of these softwares, all of these updates and the system that he carried in his life continued, continuously serve 
So that Prophet is happy as a result, the knowledge is that dropping, they're the first to receive them. And as a result, disseminate those realities and that becomes our life system. So when people are saying, I'm not feeling anything, you gotta upgrade your software. And how? Because the other shaykhs are going out, you don't need to do anything. Don't do all of these things, well you have to do charity and all these things. What is that telling you? I'm not going to give you any information nor am I thinking you're going to receive any <laughs> information. Because <laughs> how could somebody operate tariqah like that when it was never like that? That like come to a shaykh to has no farm, no nothing to serve, is not asking for any service. They didn't have that. Our life was about service and khidmat but now the zawiya is virtual. The click online, if you like what that person has to say, give your allegiance and, and pledge your time and your life in that way. And if you're not growing the way you want, you're doing something wrong. You didn't do everything you were supposed to do, you didn't give everything you were supposed to give, you haven't got all your updates. If there's a fault in your software and in your, in your hardware, it's not going to come. Now look at the world of encryption that the people do and they think that they'll make the madad and everything will come to them. But what happens in the madad? As soon as they make madad the light of the shaykh appears. If that light comes and through their encrypted light begins to look at the individual and find fault or wrong, there's something wrong with this individual, the intention not correct for the individual, nothing will ever convey. Nor would it be on your bank. If you put one character wrong the bank doesn't say, well we kind of know who you are, here you can have the account. No. <laughs> so means you make the attempt, if the light comes and reads and finds fault in what's happening, there will be no conveyance. And as a result they go back, they do their khidmat, they do their madad or they correct their intention. If the intention is to grab and steal, you see now on, on uh, social media they run into Gucci, they grab 500 bags <laughs> and run out thinking they're gonna do that like with Allah. Oh these guys I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it from them and run, it's not gonna happen. Even the encryption comes looks and says nothing will come, nothing will be conveyed. So means that every moment as soon as we make the madad their lights are reading us. If they find satisfaction conveyance begins, the download begins. Then we asked our students, go study now crypto and cold wallets to understand that as you progressed and knowledges are coming into your hearts. You're not yet an adult, you're not rijal to be custodian of your wallet, right? Even now you say, oh shaykh I'm, I'm doing everything, my heart is connected, I'm feeling the guidance, I feel the understanding. Now what is crypto teaching us? That you're not rijal to take your wallet and go, right? Because when Allah is describing in the bayad, they reach their ahad means they got their wallet. Whatever knowledges were given to them and continuously flowing to them, instead of the cold storage the keys have been transferred to them. And their 12 seed words, it's not interesting these mm. analogies they give, right? They know how to make their madad and connection and Allah gives them access to their wallet. And so now use this knowledge for your mission that you have. And it doesn't happen until the person becomes rijal and mature in Allah's way. That their system was complete, their understanding was complete, their life is a life of service. And as a result they're gaining access to that wallet of knowledge. That knowledge is everything, is everything. That knowledge is what gives them barakah and blessings. 
That knowledge is what feeds them and nourishes them in Divinely Presence and upon earth. So this is, this is the, the system of the heavens understood through computer technologies. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat ama yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.